Welcome, friends. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. You are tuned into Solutions Watch, and this week we're going to explore a an important but perhaps under-scrutinized topic, which is the question of how to present information to others in an effective way. And of course, there are as many different answers to that question as there are people on the planet. But I think broadly speaking, a lot of people out there are visual learners and uh, would best uh, understand and be able to internalize new information if it was presented to them in a more visually friendly format. So on that note, I uh, was very interested to read this book, uh, uh, Government, the Biggest Scam in History, not necessarily because the information was startlingly new to me. I think it will be familiar, at least in broad outline, to a lot of the Corporate Report listeners, although there are always new listeners, so I'm sure it would be a revelation to some. But per particularly for the way that the information is presented in this book, it is essentially, I, I mean, it's, it's very info, uh, visually info, uh, in, uh, informative, shall I say. And I thought that was a particularly innovative way to present this information for people who may not be interested in hearing a long lecture about names and dates and figures when you can see it presented in visual form. So coming on to talk about this is the author of this book, who uh, is going under the nom de plume of Etienne de la Boite squared? Two? I don't know. Let's get the pronunciation of you know, that name right. Etienne, thank you for joining us today. Hey, James. Good to be with you and your audience. And yeah, you nailed it. Etienne de la Boite squared. So I took the uh, the pen name of uh, the original Etienne de la Boisi, who you've covered many times, but for those that are unfamiliar or new, uh, he was a French political philosopher. He wrote in the 16th century, and he was really the first to catalog the tools and the techniques that rulers used, not just to get obedience, but to get adoration and fealty and have the population love them. And so he was a little bit like Machiavelli, uh, but Machiavelli was like, hey, hire me, hire me. And Boetti is like, these guys are jerks. Uh, yes, exactly right. I, I hope people are familiar uh, with with that uh, story and with the, the discourse of voluntary servitude. If not, they can check into my archives. I have talked about it numerous times, as you say. It's an extremely important point um, to make, and one that cannot be made enough or made uh, presented in different ways, shall we say. And one of the ways, as I say, is in this book, Government, the Biggest Scam in History. Tell us a little bit about this book, where it came from, how you chose to start writing it, and why. Uh, you got it. And so what, I'm, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do it visually. And I know that a lot of people are, are, are doing this, uh, uh, you know, listening uh, audio only. And so I, I'm going to show some slides and some uh, some uh, pictures from the book and some, you know, take you take people through the book. But I make a, a preview copy of the book available for free at government-scam.com. And I will send you my slide deck so that anyone that is interested in going back Back and seeing some of you know the visualizations that I present will be able to do so uh, at their leisure. Uh, but I thought I would just kind of start out by giving uh, the audience an overview of myself. I, I'm a technology executive. I've been an uh, operating executive, board director, board advisor. I'm a, been a consultant to Fortune 25, 100, 500, Fortune 500 companies. I worked on Wall Street. In my youth, I ran a national third-party political campaign, and I worked at one of the big four think tanks in D.C. I used to live right out, outside of Washington, D.C., in what I like to call the, uh, the Silicon Plantation of Northern Virginia. And I was a member of, uh, of, of D.C., Maryland, and Northern Virginia's largest CEO network. So I've been very blessed to have seen – uh, you know, government up close and personal, so close that you can smell it in the summer, especially when Congress is in session. And uh, in my my day job, I help Fortune 500 companies learn at the speed of light. I help distributed organizations um, uh, uh, learn faster and uh, with uh, using uh, using a variety of technologies. I am, of course, a voluntarist. Uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm an organized crime researcher, and I have developed something that I call organized crime theory. And the executive summary is, is that government was never designed to serve and protect anybody. It was always a technique 
of intergenerational organized crime going back to monarchy, which was the original organized crime where you either give us your stuff or we hurt you. And that the mandatory government schools have been controlling the information that the population receives during their formative years to indoctrinate the acceptance of government by slipping it to kids as an indoctrinated pseudo-religion called statism using unethically manipulative techniques. The, uh, the subtitle of the book is how intergenerational organized crime runs the government and the media, and that's the big secret, or one of the big secrets that the book exposes, that it is the government and the media working together, and I take it back to at least 1700s in the book, uh, but uh, there's just, it, it, is, uh, it is a control of perception operation. And so the book came out of um, my thinking about how do you get out? How do you, you know, cost effectively expose the organized crime system, you know, uh, to a point where you can create what I like to call a libertarian or voluntarist redoubt where the government has no power by widely exposing its criminality and illegitimacy in a single state with a low sub 1.5 million population, ideally New Hampshire. And the way that you get around the monopolized media and their algorithmic censorship of the DARPA internet is by sneaker netting a physical book, a flash drive of evidence backing up the book and a to be determined documentary to hundreds of thousands of homes within the state driving people to town hall meetings. And I think that that's doable for about three to five million bucks, and we could do it in two to four years uh, to engineer either uh, secession or, you know, 15 to 20 to 25 percent of the population that is uh, engaged in peaceful civil disobedience and noncompliance. We're not paying taxes. We're not uh, we're not um, uh, withholding taxes for our employees and really just exposing the scam of government to a point where enforcement just doesn't work, where the when the order followers come out to try and enforce, enforce the edicts of the government, they're kind of laughed at. They're like, they made you shave your head. You know, you're in a costume. And people understand how the, the scam works, and it just doesn't fly. And then we take that state and we turn it into a laboratory of liberty. And so that's the way that I thought that we could do it. And so because I teach uh, people how to learn at the speed of light, I realized that visual learning is the key to waking people up. And for those of your audience who are not familiar with visual learning, um, the eyes are actually outgrowths of the brain. 30% of your brain, the cerebral cortex is devoted to vision versus 8% to touch and 3% to hearing. 40% of the nerve fibers that are attached to the brain are linked directly to the retina. The, the, the eyes are actually stalks that grow out of the brain. And 65% of your friends and family are visual learners. And by visual learners, those are people that come to insight or come to understanding when they see information faster and to a deeper level of, under, uh, of understanding and to a faster moment of insight um, uh, than people that learn auditorily or kinesthetically. And so uh, the eyes can register 36,000 visual images an hour, but you can really only understand 400 words per minute. So if you want to wake somebody up, if you've ever had a, a friend or a family member that you just weren't able to like explain how the system works or how they control the media or how these organizations are all linked together, et cetera, using visuals helps 100% of participants. Um, it takes the brain only about a quarter of a second for the human brain to process and attach meaning to a symbol. Uh, by comparison, it takes an average of six seconds to read 20 to 25 uh, words that say the exact same thing as the image. Um, you can generally get a sense of a visual scene in about a tenth of a second and 70% of all sensory receptors are in your eyes. And the final thing that people need to understand is that people using uh, presentations are 43% more persuasive, according to, to, uh, to one study. And there's something called the picture superiority effect, where ideas presented graphically are easier to comprehend and remember 
than those that are presented as words. So if you want to expose this to friends and family that just haven't gotten it, this is the way to do it. And so then it, so then I sat and I pondered and I said, okay, well, knowing what I know about how humans learn, how would you design a book to wake people up? And you would target the 65% of the population that are, that are visual learners. But it's not just that. It's that a, a picture book expands the percentage of people who will engage with any book from about 10 to 15 percent of people to 35 to 50 percent plus hard copies are impossible to delete and you know many people won't read screens at night which is the prime time if you want people to spend time with important information and then finally you can use visualization to make something that was previously invisible now visible using visualization and uh, we'll get into that in a little bit and then the final th- the final tool and technique that the book uses is to leverage the innate human capacity for pattern recognition to expose uh, that the US is using the same techniques as the Nazis, Soviets, or East Germans, or that the organized crime media is using religious symbolism to give the political puppets the appearance of holiness. And so uh, so we're, we're using all these different techniques, and then we're backing up the book with a credit card size flash drive with all of the evidence in a variety of formats to satisfy different learning preferences. Um, and so now, without further ado, I thought we would get into the book. And so um, really, the first part of the book breaks down 20 plus techniques used by what I like to call intergenerational organized crime to create the culture of slavery, tax slavery. And then I like to show how it manifested in each time and place. And so what I'm doing is in the black section right here, I'm explaining what that technique is. And then I'm showing how the technique manifested in Nazi Germany, the U.S. government, Soviet Union, and East Germany. And, you know, for uh, and I start out with the flag being the indoctrinated uh, holy, the artificially indoctrinated holy symbol. And then everywhere you see the hypertext links in the PDF version of the book, which is available for free when you download one of our Liberator flash drives from our Dropbox at government-scam.com, you can actually click through to find you know, short videos showing how, and as one example, the flag has been product placed in you know, hundreds and hundreds of times in just 12 Michael Bay movies where the video just strings together each one to two se- you know, segment, uh, second uh, uh, version of the flag uh, on the screen to where it becomes really, really apparent that Hollywood has been, uh, you know, product plate, not just product placing the flag into uh, movies that are frequently financed by the government, the Defense Department and the intelligence agencies, but they're actually using a technique called anchoring, where they build the audience up to a moment of high exhilaration, and then boom, they show them the flag. And so if you were to click through this, the second link in the, you know, uh, uh, second link, you would see a scene from the movie, The Martian, where Matt Damon is, is, you know, is escaping Mars and the whole movie builds up to this one critical scene. And is he going to make it? No, he's not going to make it. Yes, he is going to make it. Then boom, we cut to earth and everybody's waving American flags. And then we cut to mission control and there's giant American flags on the backdrop and they've built you into this moment of high exhilaration. And then boom, they show you the flag. This is the reason why the National Basketball Association has the American flag on the backboard so that you psychologically associate the goal to the flag. This is why the NFL has the flag on the helmets where the players are forbidden to, uh, to remove them. And, and just to spell it out for people, we should point out that this is the, I mean, this is the, the proof that visual uh, symbology and, and showing people something rather than telling them it can be so effective. And they know this. That's why they are putting this in Hollywood productions, in the NBA, in NFL, why they are constantly trying to associate certain symbols with certain feelings so that you will then adopt that feeling when you see that symbol. That is the point of visual learning is anchoring people to certain visual imagery, which is exactly what they're doing. 
Absolutely. And it's one of the signs that the whole thing is artificial. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, we'll continue through the techniques. And then the second technique that I cover is, you know, all of these organizations, the Nazis, the Soviets, and the East Germans and the U.S. all have a social contract that nobody signed, but everybody is expected to be a party to. And then all of these are running um, mandatory government schools employing the Prussian model of education. And for those that aren't familiar with the Prussian model of education, uh, the Prussian army was losing on the battlefields of Europe. They came to the conclusion that it was because uh, individual soldiers were making individual decisions. And so what they did is they got everybody together and they put them through an unethically manipulative program where they fed them both statism and obedience training. And that's the reason the obedience training is why you have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. It's why you've got to, why you, you're, you walk in line, why they have the red, yellow, green troublemaker boards, why they're using uh, collective punishment, public shaming, things like that within the schools to achieve obedience. And also they're sliding the population, this pseudo religion called statism, uh, by using the common prayer, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the national anthem, the Prussian model of education, government-affiliated scouting programs. And so, you know, as, as, you, as we go along, you'll see that it is a playbook and that if the United States is using the exact same playbook as the Nazis, the Soviets, and uh, the East Germans, then maybe what we haven't been told, uh, uh, you know, maybe we haven't been told the entire truth about uh, what's going on at the very top. Um, but the fourth technique is youth programs to teach citizenship, blind obedience, and state flag worship. And so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a religion, and they're sliding it to the population using all the tools and techniques of a, of a uh, you know, unethically manipulative religion or cult. But there's really two different tracks. There's one track that is for the, uh, the taxpayers who will then tithe and, and kind of sem- semi-willingly give their – their uh, their uh, uh, their money to this group that is running game on them, and then there's another program for what are you know widely known as order followers, where now we're going to kind of take the kids, put them in the uniform, the single form conformity, and we're going to begin to give them awards, uh, Cub Scout Adventure Loops, Boy Scout merit badges for learning and demonstrating their conditioning, how to how to you know salute the flag, how to crest the flag. Uh, you can't let the flag touch the ground. When the flag dies, this holy object can't just be thrown away. It's got to be buried. And so they're being going to be slowly conditioned by into this uh, into this program uh, through the uh, the youth program. Now, when the kids get a little older, now it gets kind of creepy. Now we're going to militarize the kids. And so now uh, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts turns into, in in the United States, the Explorer Program, JROTC, ROTC. Now we're going to take the kids, we're going to segment them away from the school in the summertime or for, you know, for for outings or weekends. We're going to put them in the uniform. We're going to shave their heads. We're going to begin to, you know, teach them how to kill and uh, and I break down some of the some of those, you know, those various programs um, pledges and oaths forced on the kids, thousands and thousands of repetitions. We've got it. The Soviets had it. The Nazis had it. And the East Germans all use the same technique. Military and police artificially glorified and glorified and celebrated. And again, there's some blue hypertext link for those that, uh, you know, aren't familiar. The U S government has been caught paying professional sports teams. At one time it was over $53 million a year to do the flag worship and the militarism and the statism at the stadium events, which is again, another example of the artificiality of the system. It has to be paid for. It's not real. They all use political rallies and politician worship. uh, And so it's a religion and we're going to use all the tools and techniques of kind of the religious revival to bring the faithful together. And, and then the faithful typically engage in politician worship 
not understanding that the system is using, you know, knowledge of human psychology to exploit most, but not all humans, biological desire for a leader or father figure and inclusion in the artificially created tribe, i.e. the country. And when I say artificially created tribe, you know, uh, I don't think there's a, you know, people in Alaska don't have a lot of, you know, in common with people that are in Florida People in Oklahoma don't have a lot in common with people in Maine, and the thing that was supposed to unite the United States was this was was freedom and liberty. And if we don't have freedom and liberty, then what we've got is an artificially indoctrinated pseudo religion, uh, you know, being tied together to tax farm the population. Um, I break down the use of propaganda. Um, Another hypertext link, the CIA and the Department of Defense, direct involvement in 800 plus major movies, 1,000 plus television shows that we know about. The Department of Defense has an office in Hollywood. Um, and so, you know, this is, this, is, uh, this is why the government is always the hero, whether that government employee is FBI, CIA, DEA, ATF, the president of the United States flying fighter jets to protect the planet from invading aliens or even the fish and wildlife service and air marshals have been made superstar, you know, super agents in, uh, in some of Hollywood's, uh, uh, movies and television shows. Um, they all use manufactured news and the overt or surreptitious control of publishers, editors, and reporters to create an artificial reality. And so the most famous example of this is the CIA's control of the press, uh, which is popularly known as Operation Mockingbird or the Mighty Wurlitzer, was exposed publicly in the church committee hearings in 1976, where it came out that the CIA was paying hundreds of reporters and editors for the product placement of agency propaganda. That goes on today. There have been contemporaneous uh, reporters that have come out and said that they have been paid to write articles for the CIA or the CIA gave them articles that they put their name on. And I have uh, examples of that in the, uh, in, the, in the book as well. They all use manufactured terrorism. They all use false flag events, manufactured intelligence and lies to start war. They all, u- they all uh, use political assassination of rivals, whistleblowers, and dissidents. And in this case, I've got, you know, a list of, of, you know, kind of U.S. for those following at home and on the radio, I'm, I'm displaying a list of, of, of victims, uh, suspected uh, political assassination and public political assassination. And in the list, I've got, you know, of course, Jeffrey Epstein, but I also have Thomas Bowers, who was Trump and Epstein's private banker who committed suicide supposedly a couple of weeks after Jeffrey Epstein did. Um, they all use political temples dedicated to the state and its deity. And for those that are, you know, following at home, uh, you know, the, uh, the Lincoln and the Jefferson memorials, you know, we're, we're going to take kids in the United States. It's generally around medical middle school. We're going to take them to Mecca, Washington, DC on a class field trip that is either low cost or price supported, or they just drove you out there for the day. If you live in Virginia or Maryland or wherever, and we're going to take you into the cathedral of the capital that looks like the Vatican for a reason. And we're going to take you into the, the, uh, the temples along the Potomac, and we're going to show you the deities and we're going to be, it's going to be very, very hushed and very, very reverent. And, uh, and, and they're all using the same technique. Um, they all use monopoly government fiat money to steal value secretly from the, pro- the population and unbacked fiat paper tickets issued by a private central bank where fed backed banks are allowed to create money out of thin air using fractional reserve banking, even though it is inflationary and it's stealing the value out of everyone else's money. And this right here is the source of much of the organized crime system's power is the ability for these banks to create money out of thin air. And that is that that is how they've been able to monopolize the media into this handful of firms that we'll get into, you know, here in a second. Um, They all 
wiretap and spy on the citizenry, which is how you know they're good people. They all use torture as policy, which is how you know they're good people. And they all run secret prisons, for-profit prisons for victimless crimes, concentration camps and black sites, which is how you know they're good people. They use conscription. They use manufactured enemies to unite the population under the government. They use paid political violence at the rallies of their political opposition. And that really is the first part of the book. And then that is just to expose the historical pattern. Human beings are really good pattern recognition machines. And when you see that historical pattern, you're like, hey, wait a minute. That's a playbook. They're running game on me. And that really, really uh, opens people's eyes. I've had people have life-changing experiences just flipping them through the book. And so that's the first part of the book. And I'll open it up if you had any comments on anything I just said. I uh, I think this is an object lesson demonstration in how this information can be presented in a visual format that will let people understand it in a different way. And I, I must admit myself, as I say, I know most of this information, but seeing it presented in the visual format really did put it into a sharper perspective. And as you say, visuals are more likely to stick in people's minds. So as uh, people who are following along with the video will have seen, of course, you put those pictures of what you're talking about together and people will begin to see the association that otherwise could be described and explained to them, but they wouldn't really understand in the same way. So it's exceptionally effective. Uh, would you like to continue going through the visuals or should we uh, turn to the question of how people can get this book? Well, I, I want to I want to break down a couple of more because I think one of sure. the, the 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 main things that I do, or some of the main visualizations in the book, uh, would will explain to people and, and give them a deeper understanding of how the media has been monopolized. And so, uh, so the second part of the book, which is on the screen now, I call them one pagers. And they're a deeper dive into a particular topic. And for those following at home on audio, I'm, this one is called Propaganda Using Religious Symbolism. And uh, you may or may not have noticed when they come by one at a time that the mainstream media, which I like to call the propaganda arm of organized crime, is constantly using trick photography to give the presidents and the other political puppets the appearance of holiness by, you know, capturing them with, you know, with signs and symbols behind them that make it seem like they have halos or penumbras or they're, you know, photographing the president in front of a Christian cross or in front of Jesus or, you know, some, you know, other political fi figure. And if they, you know, but most people never, you know, noticed it when they come by one at a time. But if you throw three dozen examples in front of somebody, then all of a sudden the brain is like, whoa, I did not know. I never noticed that as they came by one at a time. But again, this revelation of the method, this pattern recognition that's innate within human beings, it's like, boom, hey, they're running game on me. And you'd be surprised how many people see this and get visibly upset and angry when they realize that somebody's running game on them. Um, I break down the religion of statism. I break down in a very kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, visible way. And then the other thing is, you know, in the, in the PDF version of the book, um, anybody can, you know, click on, you know, uh, this book, The Most Dangerous Superstition, and bam, here comes the PDF version, or you can click on the short video, Statism, The Most Dangerous Religion, featuring Larkin Rose, and then the, the video will play. And so the book is a multimedia, uh, you know, uh, presentation of the evidence, and it just in, 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 in addition to just being, you know, 2D of, of, uh, of the video, I break down the shady history of the Constitution. I break down the uh, the shady history of the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I but really uh, the thing that I wanted to bring everybody's attention to, and I break down the the uh, the, the secret of public government school indoctrination as well in one of the uh, one pagers. But the the main one I want to get everybody to also break down the private Federal Reserve and the theft of fractional reserve banking in a way that's very, you know, visually uh, evident. 
But uh, for the for the sake of time, I wanted to get to this one that I call the propaganda matrix. And so if you tell this is this is an example of making something that was visible, that was invisible to the majority of the population now visible through visualization. And so what I'm going to do is this is just a, a fraction of, of the chart, but I'm going to go to the, the entire chart. This is from 2006. It's a little, da- it's a little dated, but there's actually more concentration of the media uh, in, uh, you know, now than there was back in 2006. So it's still absolutely relevant. I found this particular visualization to be the most powerful in, in waking up my friends and family. And so if you tell your family, that there are six companies running hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries to give everyone the illusion of choice and the illusion of diversity of information, they may or may not believe you. But if you show them a media ownership chart, all of a sudden, it's like a bullet through the brain and they're like, holy crap, there's six companies running hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries to give everybody the illusion that there's all these different sources of information. And, and, and it really, you know, brings it home that this is how you could use uh, the media to sell COVID or to sell a war based on lies and manufactured evidence or sell the population on giving trillions of dollars to private banks and private company through the TARP and the TALF and the bailouts uh, because The media has been monopolized into six companies running hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries. They're all operating as a cartel, and it is deception and distraction on every single screen. And so that uh, that 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 visualization um, really makes, you know, what was invisible now visible. And then right after that visualization, I have another visualization that was done by Swiss Propaganda Research in 2017 called the America Empire and its Media. And I'll just flip over to the large format here because the first uh, the first um, the first chart showing the, you know, the six companies and hundreds of subsidiaries, that's the ownership of the media. That's the physical plant. That's the printing presses. That's the that's the uh, the radio stations. That's the satellites. But this visualization. But like, how would you? How how could the media organize itself uh, into? Uh, uh, you know, how do you how do you communicate across? You know, the message of the day the lie of the day, how do you, you know, get it across dozens and dozens of ostensibly independent media outlets? Well, this visualization, the American Empire and its media, breaks down how they've got dozens and dozens and dozens of the top reporters in the world, the editors, the publishers, the folks that you see on the nightly news have all been working together in three different organizations, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and the Bilderberg Group, who, by the way, Jeffrey Epstein was a member of all three of these organizations, but they have maneuvered their membership into all of the key reporterships, publisherships, and editorships at publications ranging from Fox News to the Wall Street Journal to NBC News to The Economist to Time Magazine to Times of London to The Washington Post to CNN to CBS News, Time Warner to ABC to Disney to ESPN, you name it. They're on this list and anybody can uh, can take a look at it and it breaks down who the, you know, who the people are and what their affiliation is and which of these organizations uh, that they're in, and I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit for the audience uh, that does have video, and you can see uh, Fareed Zarkalia. Here he is, Bilderberg, uh, uh, Bilderberg Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission is one example. And you go over to Fox News, and you've got their exact same hosts being in the exact same organizations. And so is there really a difference between CNN and Fox News and any of these others? 
Or is this organized crime using monopolization of the media as a way of controlling perception? Um, the final visualization that I'd like to show for the day is, uh, so who are these organizations, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, and the, and the Trilateral Commission? So I break that down in the next, uh, in the next one pager. And then um, I have this other visualization. Uh, this one is from 2010, and it was, uh, it was put together by a now defunct organization called the Fund to Restore an Educated Electorate. Uh, and this is a chart showing how the exact same three organizations are not just have not just maneuvered their members into the media, but it's the presidency, it's the vice presidency, it's the Council of Economic Advisors, it's the Federal Reserve System, it's the cabinet, it's the Central Intelligence Agency. It's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. It's the chief of staff of the Air Force. It's the chief of staff of the Army. It's the chief of staff of Naval Operations, the Marine Corps Commandant, the 9-11 Commission. Here's a list of probably and you know two dozen college and university professors. Here is a cabinet. And these are going back in time. And so for those that, that can see the visualization, this list goes back in time. And so if you take a look at Secretaries of Defense – you know, Gates was Council on Foreign Relations in Bilderberg, and before Gates, there was Rumsfeld, who was Bilderberg, and before, and then his lieutenants, uh, Doug Fife and Richard Pearl, uh, you know, they were Bilderberg, Council on Foreign Relations, and before him was uh, William Cohen, and he was Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission, and John Deutsch, who was his deputy, who went on to be the head of the CIA, was Bilderberg, Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission. So, so now all of a sudden, you know, you begin to realize House of Representatives, Senate, uh, Export Import Bank, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the National Security Council, the Federal Reserve System, the Federal Judiciary, and interestingly, here at the bottom, it's the money center banks that are profiting from the ability to create money at thin air, even though it's inflationary and stealing the value out of everybody else's money. But here we have Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Bankers Trust, Brown Brothers, Harriman, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and uh, Fannie Mae as just a small smattering. And so now all of the sudden, not only have we made something that was invisible visible, but now we've exposed the pattern and the pattern is Democratic administrations, Republican administrations, it doesn't matter. Going back decades, every single major key position of political power in the United States has essentially been held by the exact, by the membership of these three organizations. And it's, it goes to unions, it goes to religious leaders university presidents. This is the quote unquote deep state. And when I say deep state, I mean organized crime, because I believe that the terms deep state and new world order and globalists and elitists, I believe these are purposefully unhelpful, purposefully undescriptive terms that are being used to, to mask, uh, the term organized crime because the FBI and uh, the FBI does, can't do anything about the deep state. The FBI doesn't have a department of doing something about the deep state. Uh, the police don't have any way of dealing with deep state, but if you call it organized crime, then now there's an expectation that our law enforcement should be acting against this obvious uh, this, you know, you can, uh, you can follow the money. You can see how they're making money. You can see how these organizations are all, all connected. And then the final visualization, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just kind of tease the audience, uh, with some as we go by, but, uh, I'm going to just take the, the final thing I'd like to, and I've got, by the way, I've got quotes, you know, uh, from whistleblowers. I've got, uh, I've got, you know, to do a lot with memes, um, but the final visualization are some Venn diagrams that many people may have seen, you know, uh, on uh, at geek, G-E-K-E dot U-S. 
showing uh, on one side of the VIM, it is uh, a position that the individual had in the federal government. And on the other side of the VIN, it's the position that they had at Amazon or Goldman Sachs or the pharmaceutical industry or Monsanto or JP Morgan Chase or Big Oil or Boeing or the news media. But now you can see the person in the middle, they're going in and out of industry to the federal government and back from the federal government. And it's the organizations where the federal government is handing, in some cases, in case of Boeing or others, hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money for weapon systems that we don't need to fight imaginary enemies that they created with lies and manufactured intelligence. And so, uh, so that's it. The rest of it is, is some of the funniest memes in Liberty. And uh, you can get the book at government-scam.com. The book is backed up by a credit card size flash drive that we call the Liberator. And that Liberator is, uh, backs up all of the evidence uh, contained in the book. Um, uh, and so uh, I'll open it up to your questions or comments. But uh, if you have ever been interested in waking up uh, your, uh, your loved ones or friends and family and just haven't been able to do it, uh, I may have a very, very uh, uh, powerful tool to put into your uh, information war arsenal. Well, just on the note of that Venn diagram, I'm so glad that that exists because, in fact, I actually made use of just such a Venn diagram uh, in my own research on the Monsanto revolving door. Uh, it was particularly helpful for me when I was reporting on that to see, oh, okay, here's this person and here's Monsanto and here's the government and there they are in the middle. And uh, I was able to not only do my research, but then when it came time to do the video, you can put the Venn diagram up on screen and just show people. It's such, a, such an effective way of doing that and a way of organizing and, as you say, making visible something that's invisible. So I'm, I'm very much on board with this idea. Can you speak to the success that you've had in using this visual style to wake other people up to this information? Yeah, so the so it's been amazing. The book has been the best selling book at every conference or uh, event that I've either been a speaker or a uh, an exhibitor at for the past uh, two and a half three years. Um, uh, uh, and if it wasn't the best selling book, the only reason it wasn't was was because we ran out of copies. We sold every single copy that we had you know brought along to the event. Um, if I can actually, I, I call it flipping somebody through the book, but you know, a lot of times I'll be, you know, I'll be exhibiting at, at, a, at, a, you know, an Arcapulco or, you know, some, uh, you know, some other, you know, conference. And if somebody comes along and I can just flip them through the book, um, my close rate is about 60 to 80%. They're just, they're just absolutely mesmerized. And then the final thing is I've actually had people that have had life changing experiences right in front of my eyes as they, as I flip them through the book, they've, they've, they've had that moment of insight where they just didn't, you know, they didn't get that it was a program that the Nazis are running the same program and the Soviets were, were having a, a same program. And it's been, you know, I've, I've just had people just right in front of my eyes have life changing, you know, experiences in this and, you know, with this, with this information. That is so good to hear. So let's put this into perspective of how people can use this. You've talked about sneaker knitting and you've talked about the Liberator flash drive, but I think that might have gone over some people's heads. Let's walk people through what this is and how they can get it. Sure. So, so we'll go back to how do you win the whole thing? How do we, you know, what is the, you know, how do we free ourselves liberty in our lifetime? And so, you know, I, I mentioned I'm kind of like a productivity expert for Fortune 500 companies, and I put on my productivity expert hat, and I said, hey, you know, uh, number one, the, you know, I think our, our strongest uh, 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 tactic is to free one single U.S. state that has a population sub 1.5 million um, and engineer a peaceful and orderly secession from the U.S. and a libertarian redoubt. Because it, the, because none of us is safe as long as there are order followers willing to set their morality aside and you know and exercise you know and enforce the edicts of this artificially indoctrinated status religion on their friends and neighbors. And so you know how do you get you know how do you you know engineer that in an era of monopoly media and 
um, an era of monopoly media and the algorithmic censorship of the DAR- on the DARPA internet. And so it's the brute force attack to censorship. It's you got to go door to door and the cost of doing that is relatively cheap. And so for about a million bucks, I can put a hundred thousand copies of the book, the flash drive and a documentary. Um, uh, If you target the, you know, the, you know, demographically target the parents of high school juniors and seniors, you're getting three voting age people. Uh, in each household, um, and you drive people to uh, uh, town hall events where you say, you know, you just break it down for them. Hey, you, we have been getting robbed. This is, you know, an Ill- illegitimate system. They've been controlling the information you receive. We're having a town hall meeting. We want you to come out. You bring people out. You, you know, have some speakers that take them through the basics, like I'm taking, you know, you through. You answer all of their questions. And then you move them on to decentralized encrypted communications. Uh, you begin communicating, you know, to them. But if we can free one single state, then we, uh, then I believe that that once that you know that 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 the scam of government is exposed widely in a single U.S. state, it becomes absolutely impossible for the for the other states or for the for, for them to hide this from the rest of the population what new hampshire is seceding from the union they say it's it's cuz it's organized crime and it's illegitimate what you know like all of a sudden you can't really hide what's going on in this one state and then that's how you get around the algorithmic censorship of the internet that's how you get around the monopolization of the media you've got to go door to door and it's got to be a hard copy book it's got to be a picture book it's got to be back all the evidence has to be backed up on a flash drive so that that this evidence can't be censored on DARPA's internet and so that is that's really really the strategy and so my foundation the art of liberty foundation we've already done the you know we've already done the work of of uh, of of you know figuring out what it would take and and how to do it and i think that that's about you know it's about 3 to 5 million bucks and i think it's about 2 to 4 years two election cycles in that state if you wanted to have a secession but really what i think you could engineer even quicker than that is just a widespread understanding that the system is illegitimate, that they're running game on us, that the, that the media is monopolized. And what I've discovered, you know, in two years of, of you know, of, of, uh, of distributing the book, you know, all over the place is once you, once you expose to people how the magician does the trick, oh, There's six companies running hundreds of subsidiaries to give everybody the illusion that there's all these different information sources out there and they're all working together as a cartel. Once you get that idea, then it's hard to be fooled by the magician's trick again, whether it's COVID or the next, you know, war based on lies and manufactured evidence. So once you're once you're able to kind of expose how the magician does the trick very very widely, then what I think you'd see is I think you'd see um, uh, the order followers within that state would lose all of their power because when they come out, the population is laughing, kind of laughing at them. They're you know I feel sorry for these guys. I you know I say this with love, but like you know you've been tricked. You've been put through this unethically manipulative program. They made you shave your head. They put you in a costume. It's not you know what I mean. Like so now the population is is going to deal with the police in a in a in a much different way once they understand the unethically manipulative program that these guys have been put through. And then once the the order followers themselves understand the unethically manipulative program and how they've been chumped, man, nobody likes to get chumped, right? And so now, uh, you know, that is the thing that takes away the power. It's laughter. It's, you know, understanding how the magician does the trick. That is the way of winning. We can win everywhere, but we have to win somewhere first. And I think that somewhere is uh, New Hampshire or maybe Arizona. I'm going to try and do both of them simultaneously. That's where I spend the majority of my efforts is in those two states, working on those two, uh, those two states. But um, that's the good news message of the book. The, the rest of the book, the other good news message is it's a primer on voluntarism. 
And the good news message is, is you don't really need government. Everything that government does could better be done by the free market, mutual aid societies, or real charities. The world is a self-organizing system. It produces spontaneous order. And we don't need government. And so if you've ever wanted to communicate how the government is crooked and corrupt or the, the solution of voluntarism effectively, government-scam.com and government dash scam forward slash liberator to get all of the information that backs up the book. Uh, you know, you can download it for free onto your own flash drive. You can make copies. We even give you the labels uh, to make your own liberator. The information is that important that I'm get, essentially giving it away for free at government dash scam.com. Uh, uh, and that's, that's really the, that's what I'm all about. Awesome. Well, I, for one, am not going to get chumped and no one's going to make me shave my head. Oh, wait. Uh, well, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I get the point. Uh, <laughs> um, so finally, then, for people who are looking to implement this in their own activities uh, in terms of uh, compiling and, and presenting information in a visual way, you've had some experience, obviously, doing that yourself. What kind of tips or advice would you give people who are interested in doing that? Uh, you've got to give them a hard copy book. It can't be, you know, it can't be, uh, it can't be ignored. It can't be deleted. Um, if you, you know, if you take this book and you throw it on your coffee table, once somebody picks it up, they're hooked. I mean, it's just like the, you know, you, everybody that just kind of saw some of the memes and saw some of the visualizations, people are like, I, I'm, I, I've literally watched people just read the book, like, like open the book and just sit there and read it at a conference or exhibit, sit down on the floor and just read it for 20 minutes. It's that kind of, it's that level of compelling. And then the final thing is, is, you know, uh, the Art of Liberty Foundation, uh, we're in the middle of a capital raise where we want to have a think tank, a voluntarist think tank that really, you know, uh, really uh, makes the case of government's illegitimacy and the, and, and the criminality of government the same way that Heritage or Cato or uh, you know, the Brookings Institution make the case for socialism and statism. We want to make the case for real freedom. Uh, that doesn't exist right now. And so we're trying to get that off the ground. So anybody that, uh, that wants to see that happen and can introduce us to, uh, to some heavy hitters, uh, we'd like, to, we'd like to, to make our case as to why uh, the voluntarist movement needs its own think tank and we want to recreate that Council on Foreign Relations uh, Bilderberg Trilateral Commission chart. We want to update it for uh, for this year, and we want to do a lot in 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 making the the organized crime system visible, so that people can see where the money is flowing and where the you know where the quid pro quo goes. And the best way to do that is through visualization. And so so that's what our goals are, and we'd like any help that we can get. All right. Well, I'm sure there will be interested people in the audience. For those who are interested, the book is called Government, the Biggest Scam in History. Give out the website one more time. Government-scam.com. All right. I hope people will go there and check it out. Uh, Etienne de la Boite Squared, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, James. And uh, thank you to the audience.